everyone! I'm so glad you're joining me today for the first video of my new series, Illustrated Crafting. Illustrated Crafting is going to focus on answering questions that many of you send in that involve any different types of techniques, stamping questions, paper crafting, any types of questions in general involving paper crafting, stamping, and things that I do on my blog and YouTube channel. I want to start off this video by focusing on some of the questions that I received on one of my most recent videos, which was embellishment moves eight different ways. So in that video, I focused on showing a variety of different ways that you can use embellishment moves to create really fun effects on your cards. So I had some questions in response to that, and I wanted to be able to focus on those questions and answer them and share those answers with all of you, because I'm sure many of you have the same types of questions, and I thought that might be helpful. So not just responding on an individual basis, but I also wanted to respond on a public basis so that you guys can all learn the answers to those questions that other fellow crafters have and be able to learn the answers and be able to apply them to your paper crafting as well. All right, so let's get started on the questions. My first one is from Cindy, and she is wondering, is this embellishment mousse a product to let dry or heat gun process in order for it to set up or dry? And that's a good question because different products react to heat differently than other products. So in the case of embellishment mousse, you can go ahead and heat set this and it won't hurt the embellishment mousse, it won't change the texture. It will have the same consistency whether you let it air dry or heat set. You can see in the video that I'm showing here, I'm showing how I went ahead and applied embellishment mousse onto paper. I applied it in a couple different ways and I went ahead and heat set both papers and both times it went ahead and dried perfectly smooth. There was no adverse effects to applying the heat onto the paper. Now you can see here in the examples, I have the examples with me right here. This first one, I applied the embellishment mousse onto the paper using an ink applicator. So, so like the um, applicators that you can use with your distress inks or dye inks, the ones that have the little wooden handle and the foam pad that's attached to the actual applicator itself. That's what I used to apply this onto the paper. I went ahead and heat set this and it's perfectly smooth. Now this is an application that is really smooth. There's not much texture to it because we basically were almost dyeing the paper with the embellishment mousse instead of um, applying a thick layer of embellishment mousse on there. Now this second panel, I went ahead and applied the embellishment mousse onto the paper, but this time I used a palette knife. So when I applied the embellishment mousse onto the paper, this is a lot thicker of a consistency than say this blue piece here. So when I applied it onto the paper, I went ahead and heat set this. Now I noticed that the paper did have some dampness to it still, even after I heat set it. So it does not dry the paper fully or the embellishment mousse fully. It dries the top layer, the outer layer of the embellishment mousse. But inside that embellishment mousse layer, that is still a little bit damp. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be fully dry when you apply the heat onto the embellishment mousse. So I'd say I'd let it sit for another 5 to 10 minutes and by that point it was completely dry. So it doesn't take too much longer after you've dried the outside layer of the embellishment mousse for the inner layer to dry completely. So keep that in mind as you're crafting that you will need to let the thicker consistency of embellishment mousse dry before you go ahead and work on another project or go work on top of this project I should say. Alright, second question is also from Cindy and she is wondering how much rubs off once I finish and want to start packaging or mailing my card? That's another good question because different products react differently after they've dried. So in the case of let's say glitter, when you apply that onto your project, it's going to possibly rub off depending on what type of glitter, what type of adhesive you use to apply the glitter onto your project. I've even noticed different products like the glitter brushes that you can apply onto your paper, um, especially the small colored images. And those even have a tendency to rub off too. So it all depends on the product. But embellishment mousse, I have not had rub off. And I can rub over this all day long. And it is not going to come off. There's no residual um, paralyzed effect coming off on the paper. So even though the mousse itself, sometimes um, on certain products you'll get that paralyzed effect to come off. This does not. So this product is really great. It's not going to rub off on your projects. It's not going to rub off on your cards. I can even scratch this and it's not coming, it's not scratching off. I don't even have any scratch marks on the paper. So I don't know if you can see that here, but when I scratch this, nothing happens. So this product is really durable. Once it dries, it is on there for good. It's not coming off. All right, so our third question is from Carrie and she is wondering how long does it take for embellishment mousse to dry? That's a similar question to Cindy's previous question, 
but it doesn't really take that long, especially when you go ahead and heat set it or if you have a thinner coat. So say for instance, this one here, like I said, when I applied it onto the paper and then heat set it, it only took another five to 10 minutes for it to dry. If I had let it heat dry, air dry, it would have taken a little bit longer. I'd probably say maybe 45 minutes or so. Um, it all depends, like I said, on the consistency of how thick it is. So the thicker it is, the longer time it will dry. The less thick it is, less time it will dry. In the case of this one here, where it was a very thin coat, it took very little time to dry. It, it was dry literally instantly after I heat set it. So it all depends, like I said, on how thick the consistency is of the embellishment mousse. And that'll, that'll dictate on how long it takes for your embellishment mousse to dry on your project. All right, another question we have is from Mary. She is wondering what the name of the stencil was used in the embellishment mousse video of the sun rays and paths. She is referring to a video I made for Simon Says Stamp back in October. And in that video, I showed a bunch of different ways on how to use embellishment mousse. It was kind of an overview of the product. It was kind of new to the market at that point still. And so it was a really neat video that showed a few different techniques. And I'll have that video linked in the video description of this video below. Now the stencil she, she is referring to is this one here. So you can see it has this great beautiful sun and it has these beautiful hills and a little bit of a either path or water river here. This stencil actually had another layer of it here underneath that said rejoice. So there was a sentiment here. I ended up cutting it off because I didn't want that for this particular stencil. I wanted it to be a little smaller. It was easier to work with. And I just liked being able to have them separated so I could either use them together or I could use them separately if I wanted to. So in the case of this one here, this is from the Crafter's Companion. This is the uh, Rejoice stencil, obviously considering it has the name Rejoice on, on the uh, sentiment itself. So this is the Rejoice stencil from the Crafter's Companion. Now as a side note, this stencil is currently out of stock at Simon Says Stamp, which is where I normally link to for products. I will see if I can find it elsewhere, but if I can't, I would definitely recommend going over to Simon Says Stamp and signing up for their Notify Me list if you're interested in getting this stencil. Um, once it comes back in stock, you'll get an email notifying you that it is available and in stock, so you can go ahead and purchase it. All right, uh, another question we have is from Lisa, and she is wondering, does anyone sell the small jars of mousse included with the March 2017 Simon Says Stamp card kit? And what she is referring to is this little jar of embellishment mousse. This is about 0.5 ounces of mousse. So it's a lot smaller than the larger jars, which are what is currently on the market. These smaller jars were included in the March 2017 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. So you actually got three of these. There was three different colors included in the kit. This teal one was one of them. It's the same exact color as what's in the larger jar. But currently, as of right now, Tonic Studios is not selling this particular size, or this particular size, I'm sorry, of the Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. So as of right now, only this size is available. And I don't know if they're planning on coming out with smaller jars or not. It'd be kind of cool if they were because then you could kind of try the embellishment mousse, see if you liked it, and you didn't have to invest in a larger jar. But as of right now, they don't currently have the, these smaller jars available for purchase. All right, so my final question is from Amanda, and she is wondering, can you color the embellishment mousse with reinkers? And I actually had just tried this technique, and it actually does work. So here is my test trial of coloring the Nouveau Mousse with reinkers, and I used Tim Holtz Distress Ink reinkers for this. You can see I used a couple of different colors of reinkers to create a nice gradient of color for this particular mousse. For the mousse, I used a silver color, so it was a very neutral tone, and it really worked well for this technique. You can see the colors here that I used of the Distress Ink Refills. I used Mustard Seed, so it's a nice bright yellow. I also have Picked Raspberry, and I also used some Seedless Preserves. And for the purple color, I used a mixture of the Seedless Preserves and Picked Raspberry. I used Picked Raspberry for the pink, but then for the purple, I used a mixture of both of these. So it, it completely optional, but I liked the look of having the pink mixed in with the purple. I just think it matched well and it blended better on my project. So this was really easy to do. All I did was I colored the embellishment mousse with the reinkers. I applied the mousse onto a palette, went ahead and applied a little drop of the reinker on top of the embellishment mousse, mixed it in with a palette knife, and then applied it down onto some paper. And I found it was nice and easy to be able to blend the embellishment mousse with my finger. You could use a palette knife if you wanted to, but it was going to be a lot harder to really blend the colors together and get a nice smooth coating because it's going to apply it a little bit more thickly and it's not going to blend across the paper as easily. 
So either use your finger or a soft cloth or an ink applicator and you'll be able to get that color to blend across the paper effortlessly. And I actually tried it with a couple of colors, like I said, to be able to see how the colors reacted with the mousse, see if I got bright color or more muted color. And for the most part, the colors stayed pretty true. Um, they definitely, they're a little bit more muted because they've got the pearlized effect on the paper. But at, overall, the result is beautiful and they blend together really nicely. When you're blending, you want to make sure that the embellishment mousse is still wet. Once it's dry, you're not going to be able to get the color to blend together. If you want to overlay color, then you want to let it dry. But if you want it to blend, you need to make sure you're doing it while the embellishment mousse is still got moisture to it. So this is a really great technique, and I'll be doing a video on this technique very shortly so that you guys can learn a little bit more about how, how you can use embellishment mousse to create some really beautiful colored effects using re-inkers. And I think that's going to be a really fun video for you all to see and learn a little bit more on how you can do that technique. All right, so that answers off all the questions that I had involving the Nouveau embellishment mousse. So as I get more questions from all of you, I'll start compiling them into a video and be able to answer them all on a public basis so that way you guys can learn a little bit more about the product or technique or anything that had a question, you'll be able to get more in-depth information on that particular topic. So I hope this video has been helpful and that you enjoyed and I kind of got to see a face to go with the name and the hands that you always see on the, on the computer screen. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you again very soon. Bye!